The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 2, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should be able to recognize that verse and stanza forms, rhyme, rhythm and punctuation, affect meaning. Hi there, I'm Charlotte. Poetry expresses a person's ideas and innermost feelings. A glance at a poem can be fun, but if we want to delve deeper into a poet's intentions, we have to take a careful look at how the poet used structure, diction and rhyme to convey his or her message. From our previous lessons, we understand the terms structure and rhyme and how the structure of stanzas can indicate whether or not a poem has been written in closed form. In most traditional rhymed poetry, all stanzas have a predictable or regular form. In free verse, any group of lines that appear to stand together may be considered to be a stanza. I want to show you some examples to illustrate structured closed form poetry and free verse. Listen to this. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end know dark is right, because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. This is a well-known poem by Dylan Thomas, written when his father was dying. This is certainly an example of a closed form poem. How do we know this? Firstly, you should be able to see a constant structure in the poem. The first five stanzas of the poem consist of three lines and the last stanza consists of four. Now let's take a closer look at the individual stanzas. The first and third lines of each of the first five stanzas rhyme with external rhyme. The rhythm of the lines is also consistent. Dylan Thomas had a strong message to convey here, and the closed form of the poem assists in communicating this message. By repeating the line, do not go gentle into that good night, throughout the poem, Thomas is clearly saying that he does not want his father to ease into death, but instead he wants him to fight it. The strong recurring rhyme also emphasizes this message. It is important to remember that the form of the poem should suit the subject. Now let's look at a poem written in free verse. A snake came to my water trough on a hot, hot day, and I in pyjamas for the heat to drink there. This is the first stanza of a poem called Snake by D. H. Lawrence. Can you see that the lines are of irregular length? and that it sounds as though the poet is chatting casually to the reader. There is no rhyme and the rhythm is irregular. This form allows Lawrence to express his ideas in a relaxed way and adds to the informal way in which he shares his experience with us. From this example, you can see how important the positioning of the words are. The line, to drink there, placed at the end of the stanza, adds emphasis to the line. 
we realize that this is important. The snake needs to drink and the snake is non-threatening. From these examples, it should be clear that poets use different forms and structures to convey their ideas or to provoke an emotional response. Now here is another useful term that you can use when referring to poetry. Enjambment. Enjambment is used in the poem Snake and not in the poem Do not go gentle into that good night. But what does this term mean? Enjambment is the practice of running a phrase or sentence over the end of one line into the next without a punctuated pause. In simpler terms, enjambment is used when there is no punctuation at the end of a line in poetry. This run-on effect allows the poet's ideas to continue without a pause and is used to build up to a climax or to imitate normal conversation. Now let's find the enjambment in our example. There is no punctuation after the word trough, which allows us to continue the thought process without interruption. We can see that the writer used enjambment here. Now for the rest of this lesson, we will focus on the rhyming patterns found in poetry. Can you remember what rhyme refers to? Rhyme is the repetition of like sounds in a passage of poetry. This is what we aim to achieve in this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify and notate the rhyme scheme of a poem. This is the part of poetry that should appeal to the logical, scientific minds out there. All you need to do is to carefully apply a few rules and you will be successful. Remember that when we are dealing with rhyme scheme, this applies only to external rhyme. Do you remember what external rhyme is? External rhyme is when the words at the ends of lines near each other have similar sounds. We will investigate the rhyme scheme in two poems. We will start with this extract from They Went Home by Maya Angelou. Firstly, look for the example of external rhyme. They went home and told their wives that never once in all their lives had they known a girl like me. But they went home. Now when we map out the rhyme scheme of a poem, we only need to look at the last word of every line. Now you might wonder why we need to write down the rhyme scheme of a poem. This is because it helps us to identify the type of poem we are dealing with. There is a specific convention in poetry that we need to be aware of when notating the rhyming scheme in a poem. Because we are dealing with English, we begin at the beginning of the alphabet with the letter A, and then we work systematically through the letters of the alphabet in order. This will be clearer to you as we do an example of rhyme scheme. Now this is really logical, and if you follow it step by step, it's easy. Now let's go back to our example and see if we can map out the rhyme scheme. The trick is that each word that has the same sound as another word at the end of a line is assigned the same letter. The word at the end of the first line, wives, rhymes with the word at the end of the second line, lives. Because both of these words have the same sound, we assign them the letter A. Please note that we write the letter we assign next to the words. Are you getting the idea? Now let's look at the next two lines in the poem to see if we can continue this rhyme scheme. When we look at lines three and four of the poem, it is clear that the word me doesn't rhyme with wives or lives, nor does it rhyme with home. As they do not rhyme with any sound we have read so far and don't rhyme with each other, we need to assign a different letter to each of them. In keeping with the convention of alphabetical order, me is assigned the letter 
B and home is assigned C. If we had to write out the rhyme scheme of this stanza, we would write it as A, A, B, C. If you were to see the rhyme scheme without seeing the actual poem, you would know immediately that the first two lines of the poem rhymed with each other, while the lines three and four did not rhyme with any other line in the stanza. To check whether or not you have the idea, we will do one more example. These are the first few lines of the poem Office Block by John Manifold. The main construction is in flexi-brick, pre-stressed, fatigue-proof, never used before. It's only 15 millimeters thick, but carries 18 tons and more. The words at the ends of the first two lines are flexi-brick and before. Using the information you have been given, what letters would you assign to these lines? Does thick rhyme with flexi-brick? Clearly it does. So what letter should you assign? What does more rhyme with? Do you see how simple it is? All you have to do is to look at the last word at the end of the line and decide which words rhyme. Words with similar sounds get the same letter assigned to them. So if we were asked to write down the rhyme scheme of these lines, we would end up with something like this. Flexi brick A before B. Thick rhyming with flexi brick will be A again and more rhyming with before will be B. Identifying rhyme scheme is really easy. To practice, you can take a poem that you have discussed in class and then map out the rhyme scheme. Take your example and swap with a friend and see if you found the same rhyming words and if your rhyme schemes match. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you had as much fun as I did. See you again soon.